Hello, 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 hello. I'm going to start in a few minutes, give a few people time to join. Um, if you would share this video, um, invite people to join us. We're going to have a discussion tonight about depression and suicide during the pandemic. Make sure you get some people on, comment, ask questions, join in. Um, with me, request to go live with me so we can have a discussion. Uh, and I'll get started here in a few minutes. Hang in there with me. How y'all doing? That's what I really want to know. How is everyone doing on this gray Friday evening? Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Well, type to me, I guess. Um, and for those of you who don't know me or who are friends with me on Facebook but uh, don't really know what I do now, uh, I am, um, I have a PhD in public health and currently work as the CEO at Lee County Cooperative Clinic. Um, which is in my hometown. Uh, so proud to be back here in my hometown. Uh, but several years ago, I worked as a depression care manager uh, there at the clinic before becoming the uh, CEO. And um, so I have a little insight into depression and suicide. Uh, but what brought this discussion on this evening? Um, and I'm glad my brother said his feet feel good. So we had self-care day today. Yeah, I, I left work early. Uh, I'm really big on self-care and taking care of yourself. So we had self-care day today. Uh, and me and my brother did that together. He says his feet feel good. Mine do too. Hi. Hey, Timmy. I went to college, college classmates. So join us. Um, if anyone wants to join the live if you have any comments if you have any suggestions for people um during this discussion any suggestions for me drop them in the comments uh, feel free to be interactive feel free to request to join the live because we really need to have a discussion about this and i'm going to tell you why um while i was driving back from my self-care day i'm feeling good feeling great and i hear a news report about um, 19 students in one school district committing suicide since the pandemic. 19, not 19 students in one state, not 19 students in one uh, region or uh, 19 students in one school district. My heart dropped. 19 students, let that sink in, 19 students in one school district um, have committed suicide since uh, March of 2020. And they are attributing it to um, isolation and those students um, doing virtual learning and feeling isolated. Uh, in speaking with the parents of those students who committed suicide, parents were noticing how they were um, being isolated even within the home, going into their room, not wanting to be active, not wanting to leave the house even. Um, and so those are telltale signs of a person being in distress, right? And um, our young people, a lot of times, I've even caught myself saying, um, you know, you're young, you don't have the type of problems that I have as an adult, right? You're young, you don't have bills to pay, you don't have children to worry about, but our kids do have things to worry about. Our children have a lot to worry about. Things aren't like they were when I was uh, a teenager. Things are vastly different, right? Uh, teenagers now have access to social media and things that um, across the country going on that you and I may have never thought about um, when we were growing up. So let's just talk about that. Let's um, 
and share this video. I'm going to save it. I want people to share it. I want people to talk about it. I want um, there to be a discussion had because we should not be losing students or people in general during the pandemic um, and we don't have to. And uh, so people, especially young people and older people are having a hard time adjusting to our new normal and um, being isolated, social distancing, not going to school, even going to work. You're not able to interact with your coworkers the way you were um, before the pandemic. You're not able to go to the mall or to dinner. People are losing their jobs. You can't spend time with your family like you did before the pandemic. And all of these things can play a, a role in our uh, mental health, right? Uh, and so that's why we're here. Um, that 19 students just triggered something in me and I said, I've got to talk about it. Um, so I did a little research, looked into that report and they found that one in four, not just students, but when you look at young adults, one in four, 18 to 24 year olds have seriously considered suicide. Um, specifically in the 30 days prior to the study. And they this is a study that was done during the um, pandemic, uh, looking at the pandemic and, and uh, depression. One in four 18 to 24 year olds had seriously considered suicide in the 30 days prior to the study. 11% of adults had seriously considered suicide prior to the study, not in the last year, not ever in life within the 30 days prior to the study. So this is something that is affecting everyone and we should all get involved. We should all be paying attention. Um, no one is immune. We talking about wanting to be immune from COVID-19, but we have forgot about the um, mental stress that people are going through because of COVID-19. And so no one is immune from that um, mental stress. And so um, I just wanted to talk about that with you all. If you all have any comments, any suggestions, I'm going to give a few suggestions, but I may miss something. Uh, you may be doing something personally um, that could help someone else, or you may be the one who needs the help. So feel free to please make those comments. And again, feel free to join this live. Um, and let's talk about it because that's what we're here to do. Talk about it. I don't want to talk about it by myself. I want to talk to you about it. I want you to talk to other people about it. Um, and I want you to give your input and feedback. So uh, again, uh, for those of you who just joined, what triggered this video was the report of 19 students. Um, 19 students since March 2020 in one school district committing suicide. And so that's why we're here today. Not to just talk about students, but to talk about all of us. And so um, one of the things um, that... Me personally, and I, I'm just going to open up and tell you, I've dealt with depression. It's something I still deal with. I take medication for it. I have a therapist that I love. Don't know what I would do without. And so um, I don't mind talking about it. And I want to encourage people to also be open about it because you don't know who else may need to hear that, uh, especially in the African-American community. People tend to shy away from talking about depression. They There's this stigma around uh, getting help. Uh, young people, this stigma around asking for help, especially when adults are telling you to get over it. That is one of the number one things that you should not do when you have a friend or family member, a um, your child or um, someone at work who is saying they aren't feeling well. They may not say I'm depressed. They may say I'm uh, not feeling well. I'm not sleeping well. I'm uh, losing weight. 
gaining weight. I'm eating a lot more than normal. All of these different things that could be a sign of depression. So don't wait for one someone to just come right out and say, I'm depressed. Uh, most people probably won't say that to you. If someone tells you they're depressed, sure enough, they're depressed and it's time to do something about it. You don't want to wait until it's too late and someone is saying, I'm depressed. You want to catch those signs beforehand, right? And so what we're seeing a lot of now um, with COVID-19, this, this is something new for us. Those deaths, um, every day you're hearing something about someone dying. Hey, cousin. Hey, Tasha. Love you. You're hearing something about a family member who has been in the hospital. You're hearing about family members who have lost their lives to COVID-19. You're hearing about your neighbor. Um, this is something that has been, um, had a tremendous impact on our communities. And so you're seeing a transformation of people going through normal grief, what would be considered normal grief, right? Into what you would consider um, oh, long-term or prolonged grief. And just think about it. Um, if you lost a loved one pre-COVID-19, there would be a um, funeral. Family members would come to your house to check on you. They'd bring you food. Friends would come check on you. You could go out to the movies or shopping, go out to eat, different things to help you um, deal with it. Post-COVID-19, you don't have those things. You don't have that physical presence of friends and family coming to um, help you. You don't have that um, the ability to just go where you want to go when you want to go, right? Hi, Celeste. Hey, classmate. Um you don't have the option, right, that we had. So you find yourself going through prolonged grief, okay? I, I and again, I said I wanted to make this personal. Um, I lost an aunt um, a month ago, a little over a month ago, not to COVID, but uh, I am certain that... Um, some of my family will experience prolonged grief. Her sons, her husband will experience prolonged grief because, and we are a close-knit family, right? Very close-knit, but we aren't able to be there for them like we would have been prior to, to COVID-19. And that's just, that's just uh, something we're having to deal with now. Everyone's having to deal with that. People aren't able to have the normal funeral services that they are used to having. People aren't aren't able to have, um, uh, what do you call them, repasts, where everyone gets together and loves on that individual. You know, it, you, you just don't get to see that now. So just think about, think about how your children are feeling. Think about how your um, parents are feeling. Think about how, you know, the people around you are feeling at work when they've gone through that. And so Kobe asked, my brother asked, what are some signs, early signs of depression? Um, so some things, um, some early signs of depression, change in sleep pattern, either sleeping too much or not sleeping at all, um, not wanting to get out of the bed, uh, feeling tired all of the time. Um, I mentioned before uh, eating eating habits change. You either eat too much or eat don't eat enough. So you have some people who are um like to get that ice cream and, and are and are uh those those people who when they're stressed out they stress eat. But then you have people who when they stress out they don't eat at all. Um headaches a lot of people have stress headaches. So you're calling it a stress headache. But when you think about all of these things together, um, you're not just having problems sleeping, but you're having problems sleeping. You're having problems with your eating habits. You don't want to leave the house. You are thinking about harming yourself. Um, all of those things together um, would be considered signs of depression. Okay? Uh, especially if it is prolonged. Um, 
just not being able to sleep one day versus going two or three days out of one week, you can't sleep well. So just because you can't sleep tonight, if you if if you get off of this this live and uh can't sleep tonight, I'm not telling you you're depressed. I'm just I'm just saying uh it is a sign if uh several days out of the week you are um having trouble sleeping or again sleeping too much. Uh so think about those things. Pay attention to them. If your children are staying in the room more than off uh usual. Of course, our kids love their video games and probably spend a lot of time in the room playing video games. But if they start staying in there even more than often, there might be a problem. Okay. Um, especially if they're telling you. I was talking to a co-worker earlier and she was saying uh, her daughter will say, uh, are we leaving the house today? And she'll say, yeah, let's go. Let's go somewhere. And so be that parent. Be that parent where if your child says, I'm bored. I'm getting tired of feeling, uh, being cooped up in the house. Be that parent that says, hey, let's go for a walk or let's go to the park or um, anything, anything, something to get some fresh air. Okay. So you can, you can uh, feel comfortable uh, doing things like that. I know a lot of us are scared to to be around people right now, I don't want to be around people right now. Um, but it's not good to be isolated. So what can we do? What are some of the things we can do? Uh, and so one of the things we're doing is having a discussion about it. What we're doing right now, I'm talking about it. I'm talking about it. Uh, so that's number one. Talk about it. Bring awareness. If you're the one who's feeling down, open up to somebody. Uh, like I said, I deal with depression. I, I am uh, have uh, been clinically diagnosed with depression, so I take uh, medication, uh, and I see uh, have a therapist. Uh, so you know, depending on your case, I would encourage you to definitely go seek help. Um, and now, most um, psychologists or counselors. Uh, even psychiatrists are seeing patients via telehealth. So you don't have to be afraid of going to uh, seek mental health assistance. You don't have to worry about the stigma behind going to see someone. You can be seen um, via telehealth. Uh, there are phone numbers for, for you to call. And I put those in the um, heading of this video. The um, Suicide Prevention Lifeline. You know, don't wait until you're um, contemplating suicide to call and get help. There is a number that you can call just just when you're feeling that that overwhelming sense of stress. Um, another option, you don't want to talk to someone, you can text um, and they'll text back with you back and forth. Um, you can tell them the symptoms you're having, how you're feeling, uh, and they will 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, and both of those numbers uh, and those text options, are, again, are in the header of this video. So please utilize them if you need to. Um, I wrote down some notes. Let me see here. What else? Uh, listen. Listen to your children, your friends, your other family. Uh, don't, you don't have to be around people. I can't stress that enough. You don't have to be around uh, other people to get out of the house, especially older adults. They don't want to leave the house. Um, if you have a family member who who's used to working out and they or who an uh, older family member who is just cooped up in a house because they have pre-existing conditions, suggest to them that they go out and walk. Walk around the block. Um, go to your local park. Um, just go out and sit on a bench and watch other people. You know, they don't have to be people you know. Um, come up with creative ideas, creative ways to stay engaged virtually. So my family, we are very close-knit, as I mentioned before, very close-knit. We would get together monthly for each other's birthdays. we go out to dinner. And so we have not been able to do that since March of 2020. 
Um, but we probably talk and see each other more now than ever. So we have a family Zoom every Sunday. And we're on the phone for about an hour on the Zoom, um, just catching up, seeing how each other's week went, um, talking about the positives um, for the week. I encourage you all, even if you don't can't Zoom, then do three-way calls. For everyone, call someone else on the phone. Before you know it, you may have about 15 people on the phone just um, keeping up with each other. Um, so let's... Yes, people can be depressed and not be aware it's depression. Um, again, there is a um, scale called the PHQ-9. PHQ-9. I'm going to type that uh, in the chat. PHQ-9 is a depression scale. I would not suggest that you... Um, take this depression scale and diagnose yourself. You can um, Google PHQ-9 and I'm sure it'll pop up the questions. Uh, it is nine questions and it will give you a score. And I would um, encourage you to take that scale. Then talk to your doctor about it. All right. Talk to your doctor about, I took this depression skip screener online um, and I don't know whether I'm depressed or not, but this is what it says. And talk to them about it. Um, you may be. Um, let's see. Hey, Brother Brownlee. Uh, oh, you were asking, you were asking, uh, answering Celeste questions. Uh, yeah, a lot of people don't want to own it. And a lot of people just say, um, um, I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling down. But again, if you are having a lot of those symptoms that last uh, longer than two weeks, um, chances are you may be dealing with some form of depression, whether it's mild, moderate, severe. Um, you know, that's for you and your doctor to discuss. Yes, Tasha. Yes, definitely. Getting out of the house, even if you go um just walk around you know they have those outdoor malls people don't want to go shopping right now i do a lot of my shopping online now but go to an outdoor mall and just walk around you know you don't have to go in the store you can just walk around and, and window shopping you don't have to be around other people to do it um especially if the weather's good uh let's see what are some other uh have game nights online with your friends and family, especially the uh, people in the younger generation, you will be surprised what the older generation are able to do on their phones. Have game night. Get those Zoom. People can just click the link. And Zoom is free right now. So get a Zoom account. Um, send it out to your loved ones. They can see you and talk to you. You know, it's one thing to talk on the phone, but to see someone's face can be a big help. Definitely, we can talk about it later. Um, and and our, this video will be saved, uh, Brother Brownie. Let's see, even watching a movie together online. So, uh, one of the things me and my daughter did together, even before the pandemic, we like to watch um, TV shows every week. And we would both watch them, even if we weren't in the same room together, we would watch them and talk about them. So you can do that with your friends and family. You can have a phone on, no one saying anything, but you're watching the show together. Um, if something happens, you can, hey, oh man, did you see that? <laughs> you know, while you're on the phone together. Telling each other to shh, be quiet, just like you would do in the movie theater, right? Uh, let's see. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes to protect your mental health, do it, do it, do it, do it. Um, if you are a business owner or a, a manager at work, encourage your staff to take some time off. Take a mental health day. Uh, at the clinic that um, I'm the CEO at, that's one of the things we encourage the staff. Don't make your staff feel bad about needing a day off. Encourage them to take a day off. Um, encourage it and call it a mental health day. Calling it a mental health day will make people understand that it's okay 
to need a mental health day, right? I, I don't care if they just taking off just to stay at home and, and watch TV all day. Or if they're taking off to go to the spa. It makes me no difference. Just take a day off when you need it. Don't wait until it's too late. Um, let's see. Oh, there's this um, uh, what's going well. There's a gentleman by the name of Greg Bell. Greg Bell. He has a Twitter page uh, at Greg Bell Speaks. And I'm going to type that in here as well. Um, at Greg Bell Speaks. And he um, talks about, and he's also on Facebook, um, but he has a book called What's Going Well. And so one of the things we've done is um, in our uh, meetings at work, we talk about what's going well first before we even start the meeting. So let, why, why don't you do that with your family? Text your family, ask them what's going well. So now you're focusing on the positive and not the negative. Ask yourself what's going well, you know, on a daily basis. So you're focusing on the positive and not the negative. Um, and Greg Bell actually has a um, website. You can go to his website and put in your email address and he'll send you newsletters um, throughout the month that focus on what's going well, uh, just some different suggestions of things you can do to improve your outlook on life, uh, not just for yourself, but for your families, your businesses uh, in particular. But it's very um, good information for everyone, I think. Uh, some other things, eat healthy. Eat healthy, stay active, get enough sleep, um, and again, maintain that connected connectedness as much as possible. So I have some friends who have taken um, sabbaticals from Facebook, periodically do a Facebook purge. I have one doing it now where they're not on Facebook um, just because sometimes we need to think about what's going well. And sometimes on Facebook, all you see, it's like Facebook has become a... Um, obituary um I heard someone saying last week because every time you're on facebook you're seeing something um negative something uh, negative in the news or hearing about someone else um, has passed away uh, but instead of just scrolling on facebook be engaged on facebook be engaged with your friends instead of just looking at their pages talk to them um on their pages so stay engaged um, and pay attention. Pay attention when people are becoming disconnected. Uh, it is so easy to um, forget those things and just to let people be off to themselves. But that's not always good. That's not always um, good. There are some people who go to, through depression and want to be left alone. Um, but you still need to let that person know that you're there for them. You're there for them. And um, that you're there, you're there if they need you. You're there to to be a listening ear. Uh, and sometimes that's all people need is someone to listen, um, and not be um, hard on them or in uh, in giving that advice or get get over it. Uh, that is one of the things that just was really frustrating when I worked as a depression care uh, manager. Um, and, and I would hear my patients talk about uh, their family members telling them to get over it. You know, please don't say that to someone. Um, we all deal with depression. We deal with grief differently. Um, getting over it can uh, essentially make that person uh, go further into their closed shell because they, they see they can't talk to you about it. Right. So you need to encourage people to talk to you uh, and not tell them to get over it. Right. Uh, let's see what else. Um, anybody, anybody have any um, just want to talk about it? Anybody been through anything they want to uh, talk about? That's right. It doesn't work that way. You're not just getting over it. You're not a person who is depressed uh, can have good days and they can have bad days. Um, 
but expecting them to just get over it uh, it just doesn't work that way uh, like I said I deal with it and I and I'm medicated uh, I, there's just not just getting over it uh, I've heard people tell them just pray about it and, and let God handle it well you do that too pray about it talk to God about it or, or uh, read your Bible but God also gave us an outlet he gave us um, doctors and therapists and um, he gave us those scientists who came up with the antidepressants he, you know he gave us those options he gave us those options that's just like um, all those um, jokes you hear about waiting on God to save you but God God sent the boat when it was flooding but the people didn't get on the boat because they said they were waiting on God to, to save you well God sent a boat so same thing with depression um he's he's given us these outlets he's given us um people who uh who can help us right he's there are people who truly serve the mental health community and so uh and who are passionate about serving others and, and that's their talent that god gave them to help others and so we need to utilize those people and i'm just want to thank you all i don't have anything else for you i can really talk about this all night please like share spread the word um start the conversation with your friends your family um definitely therapy is definitely a blessing uh take time out for yourself i actually have on a shirt now let me stand up and see if you can see it i am enough so a lot of times people who are depressed end up feeling um worthless that's another uh, uh symptom of depression um i didn't mention earlier uh kobe and others people feeling worthless um feeling that uh, you have done something wrong or, or that you your family can't count on you. Uh, that's another sign of depression. And again, take advantage of the resources. Again, I have the um, phone number for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at the top, the crisis text line. It is so simple to text HOME, H-O-M-E, home to 741741 if you are dealing with depression um anxiety suicidal thoughts it is so easy to text that uh and just have a, a text exchange um the person doesn't have to know your name um you can tell them you want to stay anonymous uh, then the disaster distress helpline that I pinned at the top, that helpline specifically deals with stress, uh, depression related to the pandemic. Okay, this National Suicide Prevention Lifeline and Crisis Text Line uh, is open to um, anyone dealing with it, whether it's related to the pandemic or not. Hey, Essence, love you, love you, love you. Thanks for sharing. Um, and the uh, disaster distress helpline, uh, just like it's titled, disaster, um, and the pandemic is considered a disaster. So that's the disaster uh, distress helpline. And they also have the text option, which is talk with us, texting talk with us to 66746. So again, thank you all for listening to me ramble uh i don't i don't feel like i'm rambling but this is something that's very passionate to, to me uh, i am a mental health advocate uh, i deal with mental health um issues personally um and for those of you who joined in on the tail end of this um uh, what brought this discussion on is um hearing that news um the news report about the 19 students in one school district uh, committing suicide 19 students in one I, I just can't believe it I, mean, I can believe it but it's just so heartbreaking 19 students in one school district committed suicide since the beginning of this pandemic 
that's tough to hear. But uh, when you hear it, you want to do something about it. And that's the purpose of this live. Uh, I encourage you to share it. I encourage you to open up with the people about it. And uh, do something about it. Do something about it. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Self-care is important. Please. And you are welcome, Kobe. I love you too. Uh, and we will do it again soon. Um, love you guys. Y'all have a good evening. Reach out to your family. Let them know you love them and that you're there for them. Um, and take care of yourself and your children, our children. Take care of them during this pandemic.